This episode of Believe is brought to you by Cryptid Coffee Co. Use promo code BELIEVE on checkout for 10% off their Angry Yowie Coffee Blend. Head over to cryptid.com.au to check them out. It was just the most massive thing I've ever seen. I, to tell you the honest truth, I thought, well, we're the only ones left on this planet. Something's happened. We've missed something here. The fear that went in me when I seen it was just, um, like, the feeling. I'd say it was fear, but I've never felt that feeling before in my entire life. It's a weird feeling. Like, you can't explain it when you don't know. You feel like you're being followed, but you don't know what it is. We had two to our right, another one in front of us, another one to the left, and another one just across the road, shaking the daylight out of the tree. All we get is a big red eye. I remember waking up and looking at the end of the bed, and there was a figure there, almost insect-like, and then I blacked out. Welcome to the show, everyone. My name is Cade Moyer, and you are listening to the Believe Paranormal and UFO Podcast. If you have had an encounter and would like to share it, please get in touch with me. My email address is believepod at gmail.com. If you enjoy the podcast, be sure to leave us a rating or review wherever you listen and head on over to our website, believepod.com, and consider becoming a member to get bonus episodes and video content. Tonight I'm joined by Norm, and Norm had quite the terrifying encounter back in 2006. Norm, welcome to the show, mate. Thanks. You've been a little bit of a hard one to get on the show. Just a couple of things have kind of got in our way, but, you know, our our calendars have aligned, and I am super stoked to have you on. So, Norm, take us back to 2006 and uh, walk us through what happened this night. All right. Um, one night I was, I was fast asleep, and um, I was woken by a tugging on my covers, and I thought, hmm, what the hell is that? I just automatically sort of like, pulled back um i was laying on my left side so uh with my back faced to my bedroom door and um then i feel another tug again a bit harder and i pull back a little bit more and, you know, sort of sort of startled half asleep you know, what the hell is actually going on in here and then all of a sudden a yank was really hard my doona was off me it was um it was, it was pitch black, so I couldn't see exactly what was going on. So I lifted my head and started to turn around to see what was going on. And then all of a sudden, I was, it was like I was pinned. Um, and there was this ringing in my ears, just really high-pitched sound. And um, I could feel, I felt something sort of funny behind me in my back. And before I knew it, I could see my body, like I'm getting pulled out the back of my body. <clears throat> and I could see like my arms and my legs. And I'm sort of half in, half out. And I'm sort of holding on and going, what the hell? You know, I couldn't speak. Um, I, I tried to tried to sort of hold on. And all of a sudden, I could just see nothing but flames. It was like looking at the surface of the sun. Um, and at this point, I go, what? I'm just freaking out. And I've just gone to myself and gone, no way, no. And I just scream, no, no. And I just yanked myself as hard as I can. I pulled myself back into my body. And at this point, I sort of just sprung up off my bed and sat up and sort of, grabbed my phone, looked at the time, and I thought, what the hell, it's three o'clock in the morning, bang on. And I um, switched my bedroom light off, and there was my doona sitting in the corner of the room like it hit the wall and has dropped straight down. Um, yeah, so it's quick smart, I just sort of got on, I had a balcony on to the bedroom there, so I sort of opened up the balcony, the bedroom door, went out into the balcony, and I rung my um, now wife. She was my girlfriend back then, 
um, rung her and I said, oh, I, I can't stay here. Can I come over? She goes, what's happened? And I said, I'll explain to you on the way. And, um, yeah, I just, yeah, hightailed it out there, grabbed, my, grabbed whatever clothes that I could and, and sort of I didn't come back home for two days. <laughs> I was just, like, absolutely petrified. But, yeah, that was um, pretty much it. That's a super intense encounter there, Norm. Were yeah. you were you alone in the house at this time? Actually, I, I checked the bedroom door because I always close, have the bedroom door closed when I sleep and it's pitch black. And I had, you know, everything was locked. I checked the house before I left. I thought, no one's pranking me, are they? What the hell? But where the doona ended off in the corner of the room, in the up against the wall, it was right in the corner where the door was. So it was partially up against the door. Um, so for anyone to have come in or out is one of the things I looked at. For anyone to have come in or out, the um, doona would have had to be pushed into the room to open the door, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I went downstairs and I checked out all the doors. Everything was locked and I thought, yeah, no, I'm out of here. And it's kind of a, an odd place to be, like, by myself um, there. And it, actually, I wasn't the only one that's heard this. Um, I had, uh, it was like a townhouse uh, upstairs, downstairs, and it was a steel railed, and framed stairway to go upstairs and it had timber stair treads and I'd be sitting there some days and I would hear the footsteps going up and down those stairs and I'm not the only one that heard it. Oh, wow. So you yeah. actually had like some paranormal activity going on in yeah. your in your property before this happened? It was like before and after. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's that's probably the extent of that, but yeah, it's sort of yeah, it freaked me out that place. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I got chills of you just kind of telling that story yeah. because yeah, that's kind of that's absolute nightmare fuel, as I, I like to kind of say about these types of encounters <laughs> because yeah. you know you you really wouldn't wish that on on anyone, and you know it's so terrifying that you you had to encounter something like that. Yeah, it was. Um, well, at first I thought, did, did I dream it? And then I thought, I, couldn't, I didn't dream that. Like, I, I remember struggling and with the, you know, the pulling of the, you know, the covers come and, and that and that them being pulled off me. And then I thought, that doesn't just, the doona doesn't just end off in the corner of the room. You know what I mean? It's just something had to have put it there like it, you know? So, yeah, I was out of there. <laughs> um, mate, I don't, I don't blame you. You know, uh, I would have been breaking lease for sure. And <laughs> after an encounter yeah. like that, that uh, you could, you couldn't pay me to go back there. I don't yeah. blame you for not going back for two days. <laughs> yeah, I just like had to gather myself, get myself together to get back in there. I thought, oh, what, what's happening next? You know what I mean? It's like, but yeah, those those footsteps were something that sort of continued, um, but became lesser and lesser over time. Yeah, right. So this is this wasn't something that kind of was established in the house or anything like that. It, it kind of just showed up one day and then just left one day. Well, I hadn't been there that long. So it was sort of, wasn't from the very beginning, but it wasn't long after I, I moved in that these things sort of happened. Every now and again, I'd just be sitting there and you get goosebumps and chills and, you know, what the hell's going on here? sort of thing it was for no reason like you get cold spots in the house that's yeah that's that's kind of spooky like especially looking back after the encounter that you had you know does it make you question like so many different things that potentially went on in that house that you just kind of just overlooked yeah it's, it's it was a older house um and i kind of thought what the hell has happened here what what's going on that this is happening you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like there's there's some kind of unusual history attached to it or something like that. There, there could have been, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Mate, this this encounter is genuinely the the stuff of of Hollywood. You know, this is the the stuff that you kind of see in, in movies like The Exorcist of 
you know, the the bed, the the doona kind of getting ripped off the bed. That that there in itself is something that would just haunt people's dreams forever if that ever happened to them. Because you know, you're in this house alone. And did I hear you say that you always slept with the the bedroom door closed? Yeah, always. Yeah. And it was open after this kind of happened. No, I, no, I opened it after it wasn't open. Like if I was saying, if it were, had been opened you would have seen the doona sort of had would have moved uh, if it had been open. But I looked and I thought, no one else, no one's been in here. Um, so, it, it, like, looking at the doona, you would have seen it open. Uh, you would have seen it moved. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so whatever went into that room, just it, it came in there in some, type of, in some type of supernatural way then. Yeah, would have had to, yeah. So there was no, no doors had been opened or closed. I guess is what I was saying. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. Well, that's a really scary thought because, you know, you you get pinned to the bed after this. It's yeah. What what yeah. was going through your mind when this was going on? Like, were you thinking, oh. what is going on here, or was this just pure terror? Uh, first, it was like, oh, what the hell, and then it was just, yeah, terror after that. And I'm thinking, what what the hell's going on? Yeah. I, I was sound asleep before that, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're woken up with this, you know, pulling of the doona, and then, yeah, then the the ring in the ears, and then being pinned, and you know, and then being pulled out of the back of your body, and it's like what, what? So yeah, I thought, that's... Nah, I'm not going back there. <laughs> no, <bugger> out. <laughs> <laughs> do not blame you. Do not blame yeah. you. So, when you when you say you're pinned to the bed, like. Did you feel like there was a force holding you down or was it just more like a you 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 couldn't build up the force to get off the bed? I it was like every ounce of energy I have in me is just completely drained and I couldn't move. I, I couldn't move a muscle. Nothing. Have you ever encountered that before in your life? No. Not like that, no. Wow, that would have been just so surreal to yeah it's like what the hell is going on you know it's like yeah this isn't cool (laughs) yeah and then you felt yourself getting pulled out of your body this is this this part really blows my mind because it's it almost sounded like your soul was trying to get taken from you it's what it felt like exactly what it well i guess if you could describe that yeah it's like i was yeah i could see my body is like i guess oh geez so hard to describe it's yeah it just freaked me out but yeah i had no energy and i was holding on like you know energy to move or no way of moving like being completely drained of energy and pushed down at the same time kind of thing or pulled down and then being pulled out of my body. That's what, that's all I could see was, I guess, half in, half out of my body. That is, I don't, I don't even know what to make of that because it, it almost sounds like you were almost astral traveling, but not by your own will. Like something was dragging you into an astral realm or something like that probably the best way to describe it being dragged out of your own body if that makes sense it does yeah, make sense just, and that's the terrifying part does. of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 so yeah i'm just glad i'm here Mate, absolutely <laughs> me too because yeah. this this story is incredible and the the most terrifying part is like you saw the flames after that yeah, I just couldn't make head nor tail of that. And all I could see, yeah, it was just flames. What do you th- what do you think that was? I have no idea. But that's all all that was in my vision was just like flames. Are you a religious yeah. person there, Norm? No. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> because I think this story would have a completely different meaning for you if uh, if you were. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was. If you were, you know, if you see on the internet 
or whatever, say the surface of the sun. That's kind of what I was looking at. That's, I don't know what to make of that. It is just, no. it's, it's terrifying, you know, just, just for that whole reason that, you know, I've never heard anyone else having an encounter like this. And, you know, not that I'm the, the master of, you know, people's encounters or anything like that. And I, I know everything, but the, just the uniqueness of this type of encounter that you had is just so fascinating to me. What do you think it was that, that did this to you? Like, do you think this was some, an entity or do you think that this was your, yourself doing an out of body experience that you had no control of? I, I hundred percent think it's not myself. <laughs> I think it was something else. I think it was something hanging around. Yeah. It decided, hey, let's have a crack at this. Kind of, that's what it felt like to me, you know, it was kind of. The the thing is, like, I, I probably wouldn't really disagree with you here, Norm, because one of the one of the things I hear fairly often when it comes to paranormal encounters with, with individuals, like so one-on-one, -on -one, is that there is this real draining feeling about them. Like they've, they've taken your energy almost to, to make what they wanted to do happen. And now a quick word from our sponsor. Also, are you wanting more content? Why not become a Believe Plus member? You'll get access to exclusive podcasts and episodes that aren't available to the public. Not only that, you'll also get our regular feed without any ads. Head to believepod.com forward slash plus to sign up today for just $5 a month. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, to be honest, how I felt afterwards as if I went for a, a 5K sprint, <laughs> if you would call 5Ks a sprint. But no, <laughs> run, run really hard for about 5Ks. Yeah. Just, you know, at the end of that, you, you absolutely, you know, if you're not – used to something like that you're absolutely buggered and that's how i felt afterwards i was just I was like that for a day or so did it ever happen to you again in that house or like anything like that happen again no not not like that no it's just it was just every now and again there'd be like a a couple of footsteps or footsteps going up and down the stairs and they were clear as as clear as I don't know, <laughs> is listening to the radio in the car, you know, it, it was right, right in front of your face kind of thing. Yeah. Like you, you couldn't mistake it for anything else. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What was it like going back into the, into the house after that? Like I could imagine the anxiety and the, the fear of opening that front door to, to go back into that house because, you know, the reality is like, you can't just not go back home. You know, yeah. everything you have is there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I ran out of clothes. So <laughs> I had to go home. <laughs> no, um, yeah, my girlfriend came with me and just opened up the house, just like, yep, yeah, let some sunshine in. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go in there by myself. But, uh, but yeah, it was, yeah, after that, it was pretty much wary for a little while. And yeah, but um, yeah, it was really weird it took a little while to settle back down in a, in a way where you feel comfortable in your own house you know oh absolutely i would have a absolute sense of paranoia the entire time i was there <laughs> like any type of noise I, I would have been so on edge yeah you're jumpy for a little bit but yeah no, got got used to it and yeah i was out of there uh, oh, probably a year or so after that i was yep i was gone <laughs> hung around for another year yeah <laughs> bloody yeah. hell norm <laughs> um, yeah. so okay this all happens it happens at 3 a.m and like the the th 3 a.m i don't know if you're aware but that's like the witching hour that's when you know the the spirit world is supposed to be the most active the most alive were you were you aware of that um not really I don't know why I had to look at the time. I just I generally look at the time when I wake up in the middle of the night. Anyway, I don't know why I do it. I just do. But yeah, I just looked at the time and gone oh, three a.m. That's that's weird. And yeah, it may have just been a funny coincidence. But um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, <laughs> I I feel like that was kind of peak activity time right there. 
Could have been, yeah. So I have to ask, what was your your girlfriend's, what was her impression of all of this? Oh, she, she could see the fear in my eyes, I guess. How freaked out I was on going, yeah. And she was, she was pretty much on edge when she came with me as well. She goes, this is, yeah, it'll be okay. It'll just be okay kind of thing. And I was like, yeah, right, okay. <laughs> I just got to try not to feed that fear, you know what I mean? So you don't, um, you don't give it anything that it may want, whatever, whatever it was, you know what I mean? That's actually super conscious of that like that's amazing that you're so conscious of that that you didn't want to you know potentially feed the the energy or or anything like that well you you were super conscious of that were you yeah oh, my girlfriend was she was yeah you know, we were talking about sort of going back into the house sort of thing you know what i mean it's um it's like oh yeah it's just whatever you felt just don't give it anything don't feed whatever it was yeah, that's that's really good advice. Um, yeah, because the the reality is, you know, you do have to go back to this place, and you do yeah. have to live there. Yeah, well, on the outside, I tried to give it nothing, but on the inside, it wasn't okay. <laughs> <laughs> just quietly shitting myself. Yeah, just a little bit, waiting for something to happen. <laughs> yeah, oh mate, I do not blame you on that. That is just yeah. honestly one of the most terrifying things I could ever imagine happening to to anyone. Because you know the movies these days, you know they they build whole franchises off this. You know, like I think of Paranormal Activity, and I think of like this is what this makes me think of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I have. I wasn't even thinking of anything like that. It's just something that just like it just freaked me out. It just came out of nowhere, if you know what I mean. It's just, yeah. So there was like no, no like event that could have tipped this off. It just was a random happening and, yeah. and then it just slowly faded over time. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's sort of. You, you heard the footsteps and you think, no, 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 I'm just hearing things, you know. Then other people are there and then they hear it and, you know, and you're there and go, that wasn't, I didn't just, and they go, no, that was, you know, that was definitely something. Yeah, and so then, what was the reaction of other people when they heard uh, this, this going on in your house? It's like, oh, that's, that's weird. That's like, yeah, that's really weird. So it's freaky. That's pretty much it. Wow. And then sort of, yeah, let's go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, Norm. I, I, I always feel terrible when I laugh during like interviews like this with people. But, you know, like you, you seem to have such a, like a happy-go-lucky approach to this whole type of encounter of like, yeah, this was, hap- this was genuinely terrifying and it scared the shit out of me. But what yeah. can you do? That's right. What what can you do? You can't do too much about it. You don't know where it's coming from, or when it's going to happen, or you know, you just got to deal with it in one way or another. And I just try and not give it anything. I guess that's it's like yeah, let's let's uh, yeah, uh, it's kind of weird. Let's go. <laughs> Did you yeah. ever talk to anyone else about this apart from your partner? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of people, some family and that, yeah. And what was their reaction to to it all? Oh, uh, freaked out a little bit. It's like, what the hell did you do? Oh, I got out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And their, their, their reaction was, yeah, pretty much just, that's weird, that's freaky. Yeah, right. So, it, like, there was no ridicule or anything about it, which is, that's fantastic. No, actually, no one's actually ridiculed me over it that i've spoken to you know i think that really gives a lot of credence to to people who have like paranormal encounters because i don't know what it is but people are 
you know, they'll, they'll laugh about UFO encounters and they'll laugh about Yowie encounters. But, you know, if you invite a mate into a haunted house, I'll tell you what, the first thing they're saying is no way. Yeah, that's it. Or well, maybe if, if you're okay with being here, that's okay. I can deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, nothing weird's going to happen. Uh, but we can go up the pub or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm starting to think, Norm, you made this whole story up just to, you know, get out of the house and go down for a, for a couple of beers with your mates. <laughs> so yeah. do, do you ever wonder, like, why this happened to you? I do, actually. I just, like, why? What the hell? What happened that that this happened? You know what I mean? Um, do you ever wonder what would have happened to you if you didn't fight back? I have the feeling that I just wouldn't be here. That that was the, in my mind, before I screamed no, I felt like that was it. I'm gone. That was the end. That's scary. You know, that's, 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 that's what my feeling was. That's a, that's a really scary thought because, yeah. you know, you, you leave this world to be taken to where yeah good question yeah it's the it's a type of thought process that would keep you up at night yeah 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 i try not to think about it <laughs> i don't blame you yeah i I, yes. I really don't blame you i guess it's the million dollar question what's on the other side you know that's where i was being taken to wherever that was yeah that's where it felt like did you ever feel like there was a presence in that room? Like, do you think this was... Oh, in the whole house. In the whole house. Yeah. Wherever I went, I was there. Wow. That's what it felt like. God, I, I, I get chills just thinking of yeah. being in that situation, Norm, because, you know, it's it's just so out of the normal that it is just uncomfortable to to even think of. Yeah, it was uncomfortable being there by myself. To have such an encounter and then to, to try live there and, you know, know that this thing is potentially still walking around that, that house, you know, making itself known, my anxiety levels would have been through the roof. Yeah. Yeah, they were. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they definitely were. It's, it's like walking on eggshells sometimes. When you when you just you just walking around and you go through, it's like walking through into the kitchen and you just walk through somewhere that's cold, and then you got goosebumps all over you and you slowly sort of shiver down down your spine and you go, what the hell was that kind of thing? And it's like, yeah, yeah, maybe I'll go outside for a bit. It would have felt like there was just eyes on you the entire time. Pretty much, yeah. Yep. Did you ever feel like it was yeah. going to happen again? No. I don't know why, but no. It right. felt like um, something had a crack, didn't get what it wanted, but it was hanging around. Did your partner ever stay at the, the house oh, after yeah, that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And she never encountered anything like that? No, just the footsteps. That's it. Wow. It really wanted you, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a scary thought. That's a scary thought. <laughs> yeah. And the question is why? You know, those things that go through your mind, why? It's something that would, honestly, just that thought would haunt me more than the experience. It has. All the time. Have you ever spoken to anyone else who's had something similar happen to them? No. No, not like that. It'd be interesting to know if anyone who's listening to this podcast has had something like that happen to them because, you know, I I try to feature people on the on the show who have had, you know, different encounters. And I tell you what, Norm, yours is quite different, <laughs> to, it to, is to, different. Put it, to put it bluntly. <laughs> yeah. Um and it'll be really interesting to to see if, you know, there's anyone who listens to this show, if they've had something similar happen to them. That would be good to know, like, get some sort of maybe 
answers would be great, but you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and have you have you ever spoken to like a medium or or a psychic or anything like that about this? Funny you say that, because um, recently my wife booked me in to see a medium um, or psychic, um, and she I did mention it to her, um, and she said sometimes some things attach themselves. And they will try and take you over. I don't mind that. that sounds like what was trying to be done. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It um, it makes you think what would have happened after, if, if this thing got a hold of you, what would have happened to the norm we know? Exactly. That's, that's, that's a good question. That's what I was saying. When I, when I was being pulled out of my body, I, I, I thought that was it. I was done. What happened after that? Who knows? Who knows if my body's still alive and someone else is in it? <laughs> if that makes sense. No, yeah. absolutely. Kind yeah. of like a, a body snatcher type yeah. of scenario there. Yeah. You know, when, when you have an encounter like the one that you had there, Norm, I really don't think that there's um, any answer that's off the table. You know, like nothing, there's no ridiculous answer when it comes to a situation like the one that you've just had. Yeah, well, when when you're asleep in your, in your own room and it's all locked up and it's after that happens, it's like, oh, well, there's nowhere, no safe space to go, really, is there? Yeah, yeah, and you know that that whole that whole situation right there that would have just been like a you would have really felt like just insanely vulnerable anywhere you were. Yeah, pretty. Oh, well, in the house, outside of the house, I didn't feel anything like that. It was just in the house. So no no feelings like you're being watched or anything when you or you were away from that property? Pretty much, yeah. It was just in the house. So did you tell the uh, <laughs> the tenants who went in there after you about all this? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? If it, if, it, if it stopped bothering you, who knows? Maybe that was it. <laughs> it could have been it. Um yeah, who knows? I didn't give my wife any grief, so I figured maybe it was just having a crack at me for whatever reason. Maybe maybe it, it, it liked you on that day and thought, you know what, this is the opportunity. I'm taking the shot. And may, I'm, I'm glad you were stronger than it, to be honest. Yeah, like, yeah, me too. <laughs> because of, honestly, I, this is this is one of the most incredible stories I've, I've heard in a long time. And, you know, I... I think it's amazing, Norm, that you are just so casual about it now of, yes. yeah, that happened. I lived there for, you know, about a year or so after it. And, yeah, it was pretty weird. Yeah, it's, well, it's been 16 years nearly. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so it's sort of, although it's in the forefront of my mind, the, I'm not at that place anymore. <laughs> you know, every now and again it pops up in my head and I think, oh, no, yeah. I'm glad I'm out of there. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Believe Paranormal in UFO podcast. If you have had an encounter and you would like to share it, please get in touch with me. My email address is believepod at gmail.com. Finally, don't forget to follow us on all our social media outlets and be sure to join our Discord server to talk to other listeners of the show. You'll find all these links in our show notes. Thank you.